Hey everybody, Tommy Johns here. I'm here with my best friend, Roosevelt Rat, and Roosevelt, Roosevelt, no, wake up, wake up. This is no time to be taking a nap. And no, it's time to start the show. <laughs> what? What do you mean call you when the kids get here? The kids are not coming to the show. What? No. We had a meeting about this. Remember, we had a meeting. The the bird was there. The uh, the hippopotamus was there. There were a couple of librarians there. You were on the front row. At... You were napping. Yes, I know that is perfectly normal rodent behavior. But Roosevelt, when we have a meeting, you need to be paying attention. No, what? Stop. Roosevelt and I are happy to be joining you this summer online instead of in person. Now, we wish we could be at your library, but since we're not able to be, we, we covered it in the meeting. No, we're recording this right there on the camera. What are you doing? <laughs> what do you need a mirror for? Oh. It says he has to look good for the camera. I'll let you keep doing that. Um, now, Roosevelt, we're going to be performing here. The kids will be watching us through the camera. And... Um, Roosevelt, Roosevelt, you look great. That looks good. Good. Okay, sorry. Um, you guys ready for the show? Because I'm ready for the show. I know Roosevelt's ready for the show. Let's get started. Hey, you want to get closer to the camera? Okay. Closer. Closer. Roosevelt, that's plenty close enough. Roosevelt. Once Upon a Wonderfield Time, a show filled with magic and puppets and silliness and so much fun. Oh, and books. Lots and lots of books. Before we can begin the show, I have to read this royal proclamation. A royal proclamation is something important that is said by a king or a queen that everyone in the land should know. Several hundred years ago, before everyone could read and everyone had books, well, a royal proclamation was written on a scroll. A scroll is a long piece of paper or parchment or papyrus, usually beautifully decorated, and it had the important message from the king or queen. It was then the job of the town crier to go from place to place and tell everyone what was on the scroll or what was in the royal proclamation. And today, that's my job. Hear ye, hear ye, by royal proclamation. During today's show, we'll use our imagination. Imagine yourself in a story in a castle with a moat, fighting a fire-breathing dragon, or with a pirate on his boat. Imagination can only be seen when we start to use it, and when we fail to do that is when we start to lose it. So use your imagination. You'll never wear it out. To make the magic happen, imagination is what we'll shout. Oh, I bet that means that the, in the show today, imagination is going to be the magic word. Let's practice together. I'll count to three. We'll say the magic word together. Ready? One, two, three. Imagination. Good. I know not everybody said it, but I heard a few of you. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, open the pirate treasure chest. It holds much more than gold. That's strange. It's already open and it's empty. If you say the magic word, true treasure you'll behold. Now show the royal banner with the title of our show. Once it's been displayed on our adventure, we shall go. You've reached the very end of this royal proclamation. Now find the banner and start the show. This ends the declaration. That's strange. Oh, it said if we have to open it to make the magic happen, I bet that means we have to close it. And so if we close it and we say the magic words together, imagination, ready? One, two, three, imagination! <laughs> I think it may have happened. Let's check it out. This is great. Take a look. It's the banner for our show, Once Upon a Wonderful Time. Wow! Thanks for helping me do the magic, and thanks for being a part of the beginning of our show. Now, during the show, remember that magic word, imagination. Sit tight. There's so many things that are happening. And don't forget, the name of our show today is Once Upon a Wonderful Time. Once upon a wonder field, 
time, time. Be sure and watch to see what happens next. Oh, I was going to use this as a belt, but a friend of mine said it would just be a waste of time. A waste of time. You might wonder where I got this. I got it at the secondhand store. See, it has a three hands. There's a minute, an hour, and a secondhand, secondhand store. Oh, I got a million of these. Oh, did you hear the one about the boy who threw his clock out the window? He wanted to see time. Do you know what this is? It's a turret from a castle. In fairy tales, this is usually the living space for many interesting characters, such as kings and queens, princesses and princes, court jesters, knights, ogres, and even dragons. Ooh, do you want to hear the shortest bedtime story ever? Long ago, in a castle far away, there lived two knights. One was a bad knight, an evil knight, a wicked knight. The other was a... Good night. Good night. Parents, you can thank me later. That one is a real time saver. Anyway, back to the turret. This castle is the home of a magical six-foot dragon. I caught him myself after reading this book, How to Catch a Dragon. Would you like to see him? You would? Okay, I'll show you. Right here in this castle. You'll... Wait a minute. It's... Oh! Remember I said it was a magical dragon? I forgot. If you want a six-foot magical dragon to appear, you have to say the magic words. Imagination. Let's do it. One, two, three. Imagination! No, 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 no. I think you misunderstood me. I wanted a six-foot dragon, not a six-inch dragon. You are way too small to be a big, mean dragon. I think I'm going to put you in the timeout cave. Right over here in the timeout cave. What? What? A, a magic trick? You can do a magic trick? <laughs> no, no, uh, no, no, you can't. The, the kids don't want to see you do a magic trick. Kids, do you want to see a six inch dragon do a magic trick? Okay, fine. If there's time, if there's time, I'll let you do a magic trick. Meanwhile, I have something I want to show the kids first. I'll put you right here. Right here you go, go and right here you shall stay. All right, I'll be right back. Welcome back. If you'll remember just a few moments ago, we put that pesky little dragon right here in the timeout cave. Remember he promised he could do a magic trick? Well, I don't know if he could do a magic trick or not. All I know for sure is that he is still in the timeout cave where he belongs. There he is. There he shall stay. I love to read. It's one of my favorite things to do. I love to read in the mornings. I love to read in the afternoons. I love to read in the evenings and all night long. Guess what I love to do? I love to sleep. You gotta get a good night's sleep, otherwise you won't be able to read the next day. You'll fall asleep in the middle of your book, and then you're gonna have to explain to the librarian why there's drool on page 137 of Harry Potter. You do not wanna have that conversation with a librarian. Don't ask me how I know, just trust me on this. Raise your hand if you like to read funny stories. Who likes to read scary stories? Raise your hand if you like to read books about animals. Raise your hand if you like to read books about interesting people. Raise your hand if you like to read exciting adventures. Raise your hand if you like to read mysteries. Raise your hand if you like to read about wicked, evil villains. Raise your hand if you like to read huggy, kissy love stories. 
<laughs> well, I got news for you. This show talks all about fairy tales, folk tales, and fables, and those sh stories all have those kinds of things. If you like scary, if you like funny, if you like books about or stories about people, if you like stories about animals, if you like villains, if you like exciting adventures, if you like mysteries, even if you like huggy, kissy love stories, there's something for everybody in folk tales, fairy tales, and fables. I've got a set of cards here. They've got some pictures of some popular fairy tale f characters. And, uh, well, there's nothing else in the box except the cards. And here's the thing. I'm going to close this box up. I'm going to put it right over here. And I want you to keep your eye on this box. Keep one eye on this box at all times. It's very important that you don't take your eyes off this box because that is one of the places that the magic is going to happen. Now, I've got six cards here with six different characters that you might see in folk tales, fairy tales, and fables. The first one is a magical creature. It's very small. Usually it's a girl, but not always. Has wings, flies around. It's a fairy. That's one of the reasons we call it fairy tales. Fairies are in a lot of different fairy tales, like Elves and the Shoemaker, uh, Thumbelina, uh, Cinderella. Several stories that we know have fairies in them. Peter Pan is another one, of course. Tinkerbell is probably one of the most famous fairies of all. Next character that I have, a pirate. Pirates. Oh, there are so many pirate stories. Treasure Island is a classic story. It's not a fairy tale or a fable, but it's a classic story about pirates. But uh, there are pirates in Pinocchio, pirates in Peter Pan. Lots of pirates in the stories that we read. Frog. Now, of course, the most famous frog story is the Frog Prince, where the prince is turned into a frog and then turns back into a prince. But there are other stories about frogs. There's the folk tale from Australia about the biggest frog in the world who drank all the water in the world, and he wouldn't release any of the water for the other animals to have until one animal could make him laugh. And when he laughed, he opened his mouth and the water flowed back into the rivers, the oceans, the lakes, the rivers, and streams. It's pretty gross if you think about it, but, uh, but it's, it's a legend there in Australia. Um, let's see who, oh, princesses. Oh my goodness, there's so many princesses in fairy tales. Snow White, the, um, uh, the, the uh, Snow Queen, uh, Cinderella. There's so many princesses in those stories. Uh, tortoise, the tortoise and the hare, of course, is the most famous fable. If you ask grown-ups to list three fables, they'll probably mention the tortoise and the hare. But the tortoise is also in the tortoise and the eagle and um, some other, a lot of other fables that you might come across. Oh, the genie. We all know the genie that's in Aladdin, but there are genies in other stories as well. Rudyard Kipling has a series of stories and there's a genie in that, one of those stories that gives the lazy camel his hump. The dragon, where, where did the dragon come from? The dragon clearly is supposed to be over here. I'm not sure. I don't know what, what? A magic trick? Now, that wasn't a magic trick. You just somehow snuck out of here and snuck into the stack of cards. You, no, that was not a magic trick. I know magic and that was no magic trick, mister. We're gonna put you right back over here in the, uh, in the timeout, timeout cave and right there is where you go. Right there is where you shall stay. And we're back to the fairy. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to choose one of these cards. Now, if I had an audience, which I usually have, this is, uh, this is kind of interesting for me, but if I had an audience, I would mix these cards up and let somebody here pick one of these cards. That would be the card that we would use. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep talking and I'm going to mix these cards up so that I won't know which one is which. And when we get to the uh, chosen card, we finally decide it's, that they're mixed up enough. We'll choose a card and then we'll do the magic trick with them. So uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to mix up the cards. Mix, 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 mix. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, you're looking at them. I'm going to stop looking at them. I'm just going to mix them up right here. Just mix, 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 <clears throat> mix them. Sometimes two, sometimes three. I pick a lot of different cards. There's no way I could know where any of the cards are round and round and round she goes where she stops nobody knows and right there now I don't know which card it is you don't know which card it is but I'm about to show you it's the the dragon how did the, the dragon is supposed to be right here let's take a look okay I don't know how you're doing this I know it's not magic I know what we need to do is we need to get you to go back to the timeout cave. Drop you right there, there's where you are, there's where you go, that's where you'll stay. And um, so we got the, the frog. We're gonna mix the cards up again. Mix, 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 mix. 
mix them up so I can't see them and mix and mix round and round and round she goes where she stops nobody knows just keep going until finally it's about time to um, how about right there right there we will not I'm almost it's the dragon again I put the dragon over here you saw me put the dragon right here and clearly he okay I don't know how you're doing this again <clears throat> definitely not magic you go right there that's where you are that's where you shall stay right there in the timeout cave I'm gonna mix these cards up one more time mix 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 them up face down where whenever uh, we'll go, keep going now remember if I had an audience here somebody would tell me to stop and uh, I'm just gonna keep mixing and mixing mixing round and round and round she goes where she stops nobody knows and let's take a look I'm almost afraid if is it the dragon again because if it's the dra oh good <clears throat> it's not the dragon it's the pirate so what we'll do is we'll take the pirate we're gonna put the pirate right over here in the um, in the transporter frame so we'll put the pirate right there he is in that frame and what's gonna happen is he is gonna go from here all the way over to here into the box that you've been keeping an eye on ever since we started so he is right here in this box oh uh, he will be right here in this box and so uh, so we got the pirate the pirates right here here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna cover this frame up with this magic cloth whisk it away in just a moment and the pirate will be gone okay so here we go here we go let's see let's give it a try put it right here and uh, here we go all right ladies and gentlemen ta-da he's gone he's vanished hey what Oh, you, you think it's under here? You guys are a lot smarter audience than I thought you were. Uh, you're right. You're absolutely right. The, uh, the, pirate, the pirate card's right here. It's the... Oh, man! It's the dragon! How did the dra He's supposed to be right... Put you right there. Right there. In the timeout cave. That's where you are. That's where you go. That's where you shall stay. Put you right there. Just like that. Now, Oh, you know what that does mean, though? That the, uh, that the pirate disappeared, just like he was supposed to. The pirate disappeared. He disappeared from here. That means he's right over here, and we'll open this up and take a look. And uh, oh, here, and oh, it's a card. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the pirate card. Yeah, I know. I'm afraid to show it to you. I'm afraid to look. Let's take a look and see if um, it is. It's the pirate Let's give the pirate a big round of applause. He, he made the jump from one place to the other. Big round of applause for the pirate. All right, very good, very good. This is so cool. All right, good, good. You know, wh what? I, think, I thought I heard somebody out there behind me, the dragon. No, the dragon's in here. That's the thing about the dragon. <laughs> Where can he be? Oh, right there. Oh my goodness, it's the dragon. Come on, I, <clears throat> again, I don't know how you're doing this, but I'm really getting tired of it. So you go right here, right back into the timeout cave. That's where you go. That's where you stay. That's where he is. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, finally, we finished the magic trick. We're done with the pirate, with, uh, with the pirate magic trick. We're done with the dragon, I hope. At least I hope we are. So I'm going to start cleaning up a little bit. And we, what? Somebody said, not again. All right. Oh my goodness gracious, it's the dragon one more time. You know what? I think the dragon may be magic. Let's give the dragon a big round of applause. He did do some pretty good magic. Hey readers, I've got big news. At the end of the summer, as a way to say thank you for watching this show, I'm going to be giving away a really cool magic set to one lucky reader. All you have to do is enter something about the show, your favorite book, or your amazing library in the Facebook comments below. Get a grown-up to help you if you need to. Parents, if you have more than one child watching, ask each of them to comment under your Facebook identity using just the initial of their first name at the end of your comment. One commenter will be chosen at random at the end of the summer to receive the magic set. The magic set will be sent to the library and a staff member will contact you to let you know you won. It's that simple. Just comment in the space below anytime during the show. Remember earlier when I said I caught a magical six-foot dragon? Would you like to see him now? Oh, a group of people are touring an old 16th century castle one day. The tour guide is doing a great job explaining things in detail when one of the tourists raises his hand and asks a question. 
I heard from a friend that this castle was haunted. Is that true? The tour guide, without hesitation, says, Oh no, I've been here for over 300 years and I've never seen any ghosts. This castle is the home of a magical six-foot dragon. Of course, you can't see him, remember, because he's magical. And if you want a magical six-foot dragon to appear, we all need to say the words, imagination. Let's do it. Imagination! What in the world? Oh my goodness gracious, this is so weird. It, oh, there are directions. Directions. Lay feet on the floor. Using the rope, drag the... Drag the feet along behind you. Now you have six feet dragon. Get it? Oh man, six feet dragon. No, 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 this is getting worse and worse. I said six foot dragon, not six feet dragon. Ah! Being a magician is real, it's hard work. Really? I'm trying to do a show here. Very funny. Who's responsible for this? Well, I'm here with my good friend Beauregard. I'm a bird! <laughs> yes, you are. Do you know what kind of bird Beauregard is? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm giving the kids a hint. What do you mean? I'm a hummingbird. <laughs> you are not a hummingbird. I'm a bald eagle. You are not a bald eagle. You're bald. <laughs> Would you stop it? I'm trying to tell the kids what kind of bird you are. Would you stop it? I'm trying to tell the kids what kind of bird you are. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you copying me? Are you copying me? Well, quit it. Quit it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm a mockingbird. <laughs> mocking means to make fun of someone by copying. And uh, But, buddy, you are not a mockingbird. You're a buzzard. I don't know. <laughs> What's wrong? I don't want to be a buzzard. I want to be something else. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Buzzards are awesome. Buzzards are part of nature's cleanup crew. Why, if it wasn't for buzzards, wow, this would be quite a different world. Buzzards can soar way up high in the sky. Buzzards, they can soar on the thermals without even flapping their wings. It would be pretty awesome to be a buzzard. You are a buzzard. I'm a buzzard! <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, the reason I brought you out here was to tell the kids that there are lots of birds in the fairy tales and fables that we read. Really? Yeah. There are, uh, well, there are chickens. Chickens? <laughs> yeah. There are chickens. There are, uh, there are swans. There are ducks and ducklings. Um, there's even a goose that lays a golden egg. Are you serious? <laughs> well, remember, these are stories that people made up. They're not real. It'd be so cool to lay golden eggs. Yes, it would be. But uh, anyway, that's that's it. I just wanted to bring you out here and, uh, and introduce you to the kids and to tell the kids about birds. That's it? Yeah. I want to do more. Well, that, that's, that's all of your segment here. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to bring Roosevelt Rat out for a little bit, and then uh, then we're going to uh, I'm gonna do a magic trick with the kids. Can I help? Well, no, not with the not with the magic trick. And uh, I, I really kind of have my hands full when Roosevelt's out here. What are you going to do next? Well, then I'm going to tell a story. Oh, I love to tell stories. Can I help? Well, you remember last time, that was an accident. <laughs> well, it may have been an accident, but still, I can do better. Are you sure? I'm sure. You promise? Promise. Are you really, really sure? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Beauregard, I tell you what, uh, we'll give it a try. I'll bring you back out uh, when it comes time to tell the story. That's great. That's so awesome. I've always wanted to help tell a story. This is going to be great. You're going to love this. I think I made a really big mistake. I can't wait to be back. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Bye-bye. I've been doing magic shows for over 40 years. I've done thousands and thousands of shows. And one thing that has happened in every single show that I've ever done until this one is I've said, I need a helper from the audience. Well, I can't possibly let this show go by without saying, I need a helper from the audience. Now, if you're watching this by yourself, of course, you get to be the helper. If you're watching with a group, I'll let you decide who gets to help me out the first time. Of course, since this is on video, you'll be able to rewind it and let other people participate if you'd like to do that. Select the person who's going to help me. Have that person come close to the screen. Now, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to select an image. And when I ask you to do that, I want you to hold your finger above the screen, above that image,
but don't actually touch the screen. On many devices, if you touch the screen, screen it will pause the video, and you don't want to do that. So you'll be holding your finger right over that image, and then you'll be following my directions, moving left or right, moving up or down, or moving diagonally. Diagonally means you move from here across a corner to another one, and you can go diagonally up, diagonally down, or diagonally in the opposite directions. Are you ready to begin? Here we go. Here's a picture with six dragons and six princesses. You notice that all the dragons are different colors and all the princesses are wearing different colored dresses. Now in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to select a princess. You can choose any one of the princesses you'd like. I don't know which one you're going to choose, but I have an idea of what's going to happen. Place your finger over any princess now. Next, I want you to move your finger left or right until you find a dragon. And when you find the nearest dragon to your princess, stop right there and hold your finger over that dragon. Now, I want you to move your finger up or down to the nearest princess. You got a princess? Now I want you to move diagonally. Remember, that's across the corner. And find a dragon. Find a dragon. You got it? Finally, move your finger left or right to the nearest princess. Hold your finger over that princess. Concentrate on that princess. And take a look. Did we end up selecting the same princess? Even though you made all the decisions about which way to move, up or down, left or right, or diagonally, we ended up on the exact same princess. It was almost like magic. Fairy tales come from all over the world and were written by many different authors. Most of them were spoken stories long before anyone wrote them down for us to read. About 200 years ago, two brothers, Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm, began collecting and writing down folk tales. Their first book, Grimm's Fairy Tales, contained 86 stories. Over several years, they published 210 different fairy tales. One of their favorites was a story called The Frog Prince, a story about a selfish princess who broke her promise to a talking frog. She didn't know that the frog was really a prince who'd been turned into a frog by a mean fairy. Here to help me tell or retell this story is my good friend, Roosevelt. You met Roosevelt at the beginning of the show. Roosevelt is a rat, and he's in every show that I do. Now, he's not a real rat. He's a puppet rat. And when you see him, you're going to know he's a puppet. Roosevelt doesn't believe that he's a puppet. I mean, I know he's a puppet. You know he's a puppet. He thinks he's real. Let me get him out here. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey. It's time for you to, yeah, it's time for you to tell the story. And, uh, no, no, remember, the kids, the kids are at home. Uh, yeah, right there in the camera. <laughs> oh, he's waving. All right, wave back at him. Okay, Roosevelt, that's enough. Roosevelt. Roosevelt! <laughs> you said you wanted to tell the story of the... Oh, that's right, you want to retell the story of the Frog Prince. Okay, well, many times a story gets retold, and the storyteller will change the story. For, for example, in the Grimm's version of the Frog Prince, uh, the princess had to become friends with the frog to break the spell. In later retellings of the story, the... Um, the princess had to kiss the frog to break the spell. So how are you going to change the story? Using magic? I think that's a great idea. The frog got turned into um, a prince using magic. Well, that makes sense. So uh, what do we do? Okay, you go get the picture. I'll get the magic bag. Go. While he's looking for the picture, let me tell you about the magic bag. We've got a magic bag here. We're going to use this in our... What? I don't know where it is. Look in the... Uh, Look in the studio. See if you can find it. Go. Anyway, he, while he's looking, I want to tell you that um, uh, what we're going to do is... I don't know. Look in your room. Go. Anyway. Oh, you found it? Great. So we're going to retell the story. And, oh, you can, I thought you were going to get a frog. You've got a picture of a frog. That's really good. Did you do that yourself? Uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> you know why frogs smile all the time? No, I, I need to tell this joke. This is hilarious. Do you know why frogs smile all the time? Because they're so hoppy. Uh, hoppy. Uh, okay, you think you can do better? All right, go. What is a frog's favorite restaurant? I don't know. What, a fro what is a frog's favorite restaurant? I hop. <laughs> That's terrible. Let's do the story. So, a uh, 
A prince has been turned into a frog, and Roosevelt's going to use magic to turn the frog back into a prince. So what do we do? All right, you hold the picture. I'll show them the... Uh, Actually, you hold the bag. I'll show everybody that the bag is empty. All right, so the bag is completely empty. There we go. And uh, go. All right, so we're going to take the, the picture of the frog and put him in the bag just like that. Now, what are we going to do? Oh, you're going to do some magic. Roosevelt's going to... Oh, sorry. have to be quiet while Roosevelt does the magic. I have to be silent. Is that enough... What do you mean I interrupted? All right, we'll take a look. We'll take a look. Yeah, oh, yeah, I don't know if it worked or not. I don't know if it worked. Let's take a look. And, oh, I see a face, so maybe it worked. It, ladies and gentlemen, it... Uh, what happened? Ru I interrupted you before you finished the magic. Okay, uh, let's... <laughs> Oh, this is, I think this is worse than being a frog. All right, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, good. All right, so you put that back in there. Great. Now, I will be completely quiet. Are you ready? Okay, good. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. All right, here we go. Right there. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a prince. Roosevelt, give, let's give Roosevelt a big round of applause. All right, Roosevelt, that was great. That was a lot of fun. Okay, you can stop now, Roosevelt. 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 <laughs> right. I'll tell him about. I'll tell him about the other books. Okay. Let's give Roosevelt a big round of applause and wave goodbye. And there we go. Okay, Roosevelt, that's probably enough. Roosevelt. <laughs> bye bye. See you later. Listen, be careful on the stage. All right. Good. All right. Very good. Wow. You know, there are a lot of retold fairy tales. For instance, Ninja Red Riding Hood is a retelling of the Red Riding Hood story. And in this story, Red Riding Hood has ninja skills, which come in pretty handy when you're battling with a wolf. Speaking of wolves, Big Bad Wolf rewrote the story of the three pigs called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. This is actually a book by John Sheska, but it's written as though a wolf wrote it, and he tells his side of the story and how he was misunderstood and misinterpreted. There are lots of fractured fairy tales and retold fairy tales out there, and I like reading those just as much as I like reading the originals. Hey, just a quick reminder that if you haven't commented below for your chance to win a really cool magic set, do it now. Just type or get a grown-up to help a comment about your library, your favorite book, or something cool about the show. At the end of the summer, one lucky viewer will win that awesome magic set. It could be you! Earlier, I told you that I caught a magical six-foot dragon. I think I've got everything figured out now. Would you like to see him now? No, I'm, I'm sure it will work this time. But first, did you hear about the king who invented a device that would help refill his moat whenever it got empty? He just pushed a button and it would refill right back up. He called it his remote control. <laughs> oh man, dad jokes are the best, aren't they? Okay, here we go. Now remember, if you want to make a six-foot magical dragon appear, you have to say the magic words. So let's all say the magic words. Imagination. Imagination. No, no, no. No. That's what is going on here. I said a six-foot dragon, not a six-footed dragon. This dragon has six feet. Oh, man. Is this somebody's idea of a joke? Being a magician is such hard work. It's not all applause and ta-da. You have to be pretty quick on your feet. <laughs> feet. I'll try again later.
kids. I'm back. And I'm back too. I'm so excited. Hey, you remember what we talked about? Oh yeah, you told me to behave. Right. Well, I'm being have. <laughs> okay. Well, my good friend Beauregard and I are going to tell you a story about a little girl named... Wait, let me guess. I'm really good at guessing. Okay. Goldilocks. No, it's Cinderella. No, her name is Snow White. No, it's... Wait, what? Give me a hint. Okay. She's a girl who... Tinkerbell. <laughs> No, I thought you wanted a clue. I do want a clue. Okay. Okay. Well, this is a girl from a fairy tale. Belle. No, we don't actually know her name. The girl with no name. <laughs> but she has a nickname. Cutie Pie. No, Sweetie Pie. No, Sugar Booger. <laughs> Sugar. Where did that come from? You said she had a nickname. Well, her nickname came from something that she wore. Fancy Pants. No. <laughs> No. What she wore was a red... Red jacket! No, that was close. Red hat! No, it was a red riding hood that she wore. She wore a red riding hood? I got nothing. <laughs> it's the little red riding hood. I knew that. That was my next guess. Sure it was. Do you know the story? Yep. See, this girl has power. She can make it snow. And she sings, let it go! No, no, that's Elsa. Oh, wait. I know. She's a mermaid, and she has red hair, and she sings, part of your world! No. That's Ariel. This little girl, Little Red Riding Hood, doesn't sing. She has a basket. What's in the basket? Well, it doesn't matter. Is it Pop-Tarts? I love Pop-Tarts. I don't think they're... Ooh, was it a chimichanga? I like chimichangas almost as much as I like Pop-Tarts. <laughs> All we know is that she was taking a basket of goodies to her grandmother. Definitely Pop-Tarts. Okay, fine. There were Pop-Tarts in the basket. And a chimichanga. <laughs> okay, fine. She was taking her grandmother a basket of Pop-Tarts and a chimichanga! <laughs> right. She was taking it to her grandmother. What did she call her grandmother? Did she call her Mimo? I, I don't know. Nana? I call my grandmother Nana. Nana, 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 Nana. Nana pudding. Oh, I love Nana pudding. Can there be some Nana pudding in the basket? <laughs> Would you please let me tell the story? Sure, tell it. <sighs> Somebody's cranky. <laughs> so, Little Red Riding Hood was taking a basket of Pop-Tarts, chimichangas, and banana pudding to her grandmother. Why? Why what? Why was she taking a basket of goodies to her grandmother? Well, her grandmother was sick. Wait, she was sick? What's wrong with Mimo? <laughs> We don't know. The, the story doesn't tell us. Oh, that's important. Did she have the bubonic plague? Did she need to go to Dr. Pimple Popper? Did she have a potassium deficiency? Bananas are good for that, you know. She, I bet she had a potassium deficiency. Fine. She had a potassium deficiency. Please, we don't have all day. Just let me tell the story. Cranky. <laughs> Stop it. Red was walking through the woods, taking goodies to her sick grandmother, when suddenly a wolf walked up and... Ah! <laughs> what now? It's a wolf. You didn't tell me there'd be a wolf in the story. Well, yeah, there, there was a wolf. The wolf is a big important part of the story. It's called the big bad wolf. And Anyway, the wolf stepped in front of her and asked her where she was going. Kids, never talk to strangers, especially wolves. <laughs> right. Well, Red told her she was going to take a basket of goodies to her grandmother, Meemaw, to Meemaw, and the wolf ran ahead to get to Meemaw's house first. He wanted that basket of goodies. Oh, I bet he loved Pop-Tarts. And chimichangas! <laughs> well, the wolf scared Mimo away, dressed up in her nightgown and cap, and climbed into bed. What? You're not going to say something about a wolf wearing an old lady's pajamas? No, I want to know what happened next. This is fascinating. <laughs> well, <laughs> Red knocked on the door and said, Grandmother, it's me. It's Little Red Riding Hood. What, what are you doing? That's hilarious! A wolf wearing an old lady's pajamas! That's just hilarious! <laughs> Stop it! Listen, are you, are you just, just kind of hold it together for a few more minutes. We're almost done. I'm almost to the ex most exciting part of the story. Well, the wolf disguised his voice and said, Come in, Little Red Riding Hood. I'm so glad you're here. Well, you did a good job disguising your voice. Well, thank you. I didn't know you could do other voices. What? Fred said, I brought you some goodies, I brought you some Pop-Tarts, and a chimichanga and some nanner pudding. <laughs> well, Red went into the house, and she saw the wolf dressed in her grandmother's pajamas laying in the bed, and she knew right away that something was wrong. She knew something was wrong? It was a wolf wearing an old lady's pajamas. This is hilarious. <laughs> well, she saw the wolf, and she said, 
Oh, grandmother, what big eyes you have. And the wolf said, the better to see you with, my dear. And then she said, oh, grandmother, what big ears you have. That's rude. <laughs> That's what she said. And the wolf said, oh, the better to hear you with, my dear. And then she said, grandmother, what big teeth you have. And the wolf said, the better to eat you with, my dear. And wait, I know what happened next. What? Red used her mad ninja skills and knocked the wolf out. Then she called 911, tied him up, and the police came and took the wolf away. They found Mimo at a Walmart wearing her pajamas, but she was okay because she fit right in. <laughs> that is not how the story goes. I remember your story now, and it's a terrible story. It's gross and scary. Kids, you should never read this. <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, that's a great idea. You should go to the library and check out a book of fairy tales. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> you go to the library and find out more about Red Riding Hood. You can get the real story of Red Riding Hood or Ninja Red Riding Hood. Well, yeah, that's another book. We talked about that a few minutes ago. Or check out some other story. You can check out books. You can check out, uh, you can check out videos. You can even get a chimichanga. <laughs> no, you cannot get a chimichanga. All right. Well, that's the end of the story. I hope that you, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Everybody say goodbye, Beauregard. Say goodbye, Beauregard. Goodbye, Beauregard. Bye-bye. Well, we've reached the end of our show, and we've got one more chance. Would you like to see a magical six-foot dragon now? No, no, no. This really is our last chance, and I really mean it this time. I've worked hard. I think I've got it figured out. But before we see the dragon, do you know why dragons hate birthdays? They can never blow their candles out. Oh, you get it? Oh, why do dragons sleep during the day? It's so they can fight knights. Fight <laughs> knights? Two meanings to the same word. Well, it's not exactly the same word, but they sound the same. And, oh, last one, last one. Which side of a dragon has the most scales? The outside. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Now remember... If you want a six-foot magical dragon to appear, all you need to do is say the magic words, imagination. Let's do it. One, two, three. Imagination. It worked. There it is. The six-foot dragon. Oh, man. He's beautiful. The six-foot dragon. I told you I could do it. I knew I could if I kept trying. Well, folks, that's our show. I hope you've had as much fun as I have. We've laughed a lot. We've learned a few things. We've done a little magic and we've heard a lot of stories. One of my teachers in elementary school used to say that the most magical words in the English language are once upon a time. So now it's your turn. Go and imagine your story. You can make it epic. You can fill it with adventure and fun and making a difference for the people you meet. You get to write every line in your story and when something unexpected comes along, like it always does in a good story, you'll be able to find a way to change direction and keep writing your amazing story. Nobody else can write it for you. Only you can do that. But I can get you started. Once upon a time, there was a kid who...